I am sitting courtside with Miami Heat play-by-play -play man of Miami, I basically, Eric Reed. Eric, thanks for joining us for our pregame show. It's my pleasure. <laughs> now, I called you man of Miami, but I'm curious because you grew up in New York, you went to college in New York, but you've been in Miami for over 30 years now. So are you still a New Yorker or are you <laughs> a man, Miami guy? You're starting out with a tough question. <laughs> I'm 305 now, but I was real <laughs> proud of uh, the 516 growing up in Massapequa, New York. Uh, love going to Massapequa high schools. Still have many beautiful, wonderful friend friendships there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then went off to Ithaca College. My first job was working at uh, Cornell University games. I, I started doing Cornell basketball my junior year at Ithaca College, and I have been blessed. I have not missed a basketball season wow. since then. This is year 36 with the Heat. and. Uh, that kid from Massapequa was doing exactly mm -hmm. what he wanted to. So a little bit of both. You know, not everyone is blessed to, to say that, that you got that you got to have a uh, upbringing in New York. Now you're here in Miami. And before I talk to you about tonight's game, I have to just ask you first, because this is my second season with the Nets. And I know that since you grew up in the area, you were part of the good old days, glory days mm -hmm. of the ABA, where you had the Knicks and the Nets. So which one was your team and who did you pick? Usually? I loved them both. I, I grew up on the island, so mm -hmm. uh, the first Nets game, I saw were with Rick Barry and Laverne Tart and Jim Ard playing at the Comac Arena. And then I think I was in high school, walked up to the Nassau County Coliseum, bought tickets at the window for game seven, and saw Julius and Larry Keenan against David Thompson and Marvin Webster. Wow. I love the ABA, but I grew up, my dad was a Nick season ticket holder from the time I was about seven years old. So I grew up about eight rows under the basket on the 7th Avenue side. Oh, wow. I saw a lot of great basketball then, and I've been blessed to see a lot more since. Yeah, you are seeing a lot of great basketball <laughs> as we look, as we sit here and see a lot of banners hanging up. So let's talk hey, about hey, your team, the Miami hey, Heat group. You know, the last time the Brooklyn hey, Nets took one, on Miami, three, ten, two weeks ago, we were just hey, here. Hey, hey. You guys were one and four. Now you sit at seven and four. You've on this six game winning streak. What changes have you seen from this Heat group? A lot. Uh, listen, when the Nets came in here, it was, it was November 1st. That's the last time Miami lost. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn was shorthanded that game. You are shorthanded again as you come into this game. It's almost always going to be a really good game between Miami and Brooklyn. The teams are similar in this regard. Both teams uh, create havoc defensively, force a lot of turnovers. That not only helps you defensively, it helps you on the offensive end. So what's been key for Miami, great defense. They're forcing turnovers. They're not committing many, just 15 in the last two games. And the Heat commit the fewest fouls in the NBA. So they're keeping other teams off the line. And Miami's the third best free throw shooting team in the league. So that's how they're getting over right now. Great defense and very efficient offense. It's interesting because Jacques Vaughn during pregame talked about when you play a Heat team, you know what you are getting. What is it about the Heat culture where every single year, every single season, you kind of know the style of basketball, no matter what players are coming in and out? There's great synchronicity between the people that select the talent and the people that coach the talent here in Miami. And I think that cohesion between basketball front office and, and the coaching staff, they know what they're looking for. And uh, you're going to work hard. You're going to be in great shape. It's going to all be about winning. And it is with every team. But, you know, Pat Riley's saying of keep the main thing, the main thing main thing is try to win each night and, and play in the late June. Well, tonight's game is going to be interesting because this Nets group has been successful against this Miami Heat team. Two weeks ago, you saw this Brooklyn team have a great comeback. They had a lot of that had to do with the guys that were playing from the bench and the Nets has, are still dealing with some injuries, but they have still been able to kind of play up to their basketball and get a lot of big wins. What have you seen? What stands out to you about this Brooklyn team where no matter who is in now the rotation, they've been able to put a full game together. I'm sorry we're not going to get to to see Cam Thomas. I'm intrigued by the way that young man can score, but I'm a big fan of Jacques Vaughn. He's one of my favorite people in the NBA. His positivity as a human being, I think, translates very naturally to his team. Uh, they can play with, with Ben Simmons. They're one of the best in the league at pushing the ball up the floor. Without him, they spread it out. They shoot a lot of threes. They got a lot of good players. Uh, for Miami, this is a challenging game, not only because of how good the Nets are. Uh, Miami just got off the road four games over eight days. Mm -hmm. Go back on the road tomorrow for five games over nine nights it's a tough game when you come home for a day and a half but it's about taking care of your business at home and that's that's what Eric Spolster and his heat want to do tonight and that's what Spolster said during his pregame press conferences tonight it's going to be about who's going to compete more and who's going to be the best team Eric I cannot let you go without asking you will we get a kaboom call tonight
Potentially, possibly. For the Heat, I hope so. <laughs> for the uh, Heat. I've only had one opposing player ever ask me for a kaboom. Okay. And it was the great Buddy Heald, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And I, the first time he asked, I told him I, I didn't think I could do that. But when he came back in later that season, he was leading the league in threes. I felt like I owed it to him. So it's the only visitor kaboom that I've mm. yet to issue. Maybe the Nets will do it for you tonight. It might be in a magical play. It could be. Well, we're on NBA TV tonight, so <laughs> maybe we'll sneak one in, Ooh. but no promises. No <laughs> promises. Right. Eric, thank you so <laughs> thank much you. for the time. Thank Have a you. great game and great call tonight. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice and to meet you. Great so. success with you and your Nets broadcasting group. Thank you so much.